In this video, I want to go through an example as to how we can calculate the prior predictive distribution. I'm going to also show you some of the intuition behind how the prior predictive distribution works for our disease example. And then finally, I'm going to go through and derive the specific form of the prior predictive distribution. So just to recap, the idea here is that we have got some sort of population and within that population there is a certain fraction of individuals who have a disease, which we're calling theta. And the idea is that we only have a sample from that population and we're trying to do some sort of inference about free theta. So normally what that means is that we come up with a posterior distribution for theta. And um, we've said in this example that the variable x might represent the sum of the sort of individual Bernoulli trials of individuals removed from the population, so whether or not each individual has the disease. So x here represents the sum for all individuals in our sample of the individual disease status, which I'm going to call little xi. And p of x here, this is what we're going to call our prior predictive distribution. This is what values of x we would expect to get in our sample size of n before we actually observe our data. And we've already spoken about how we can get this. We can get this prior predictive distribution by integrating out across all ranges of theta. Theta ranges from 0 to 1 in this example of the joint probability of x and theta. And we've also seen that we can rewrite this using the rule of conditional probability as the integral from 0 to 1 of the likelihood, the probability of x given theta, times the probability of theta, our prior, d theta. And we spoke about how in this example the likelihood is going to be a binomial function and the prior which we're going to use here because of its conjugacy property is a beta prior. And we've spoken about how a beta prior can actually represent a range of different beliefs about the probability of an individual having the disease in the population theta. Before I actually go through and derive the specific distribution here mathematically I want to talk about some of the intuition behind it. So remember that the beta distribution is a distribution which is described by two parameters, a and b. And by varying these parameters a and b, we can get a range of different beliefs, and we would expect that to be reflected somewhat in our prior predictive distribution. So let's imagine in this example that we are taking 10 individuals from the population, and before we actually go through and observe our data, we'd like to think about which sort of likelihood of, of number of people having the disease would be most likely given our prior beliefs. So I want to show you now using a MATLAB simulation exactly how the parameters A and B actually affect the prior predictive distribution here. So I'm starting off with a flat prior, a uniform prior of A and B both being equal to one. And remember in that circumstance, the beta prior is in fact a uniform prior. So before we run this, we probably expect that the prior predictive distribution should also be relatively flat. So if we run this, we see here in the top that the prior is just a uniform prior and that down the bottom here we have a prior predictive distribution which is also flat. And notice another thing about this, the fact that the prior distribution here is a continuous distribution whereas the prior predictive distribution here is actually a discrete probability distribution, it's a PMF here, because of the fact that we can't have a non-integer number of individuals having the disease. Another thing to notice is that the axes here aren't exactly the same. The prior here has a sort of range of 0 to 1 because we're talking about theta, whereas the range of the bottom axis here is from 0 to 10 because the sort of minimum value of individuals having the disease is 0 and the maximum is 10. So as we change the parameters a and b, we would expect somewhat this to be reflected in the prior predictive distribution. So if we pick a value of a which is quite large, so let's pick a value of a which is 8, then if we rerun this, remember that picking a large value of a essentially is going to skew the distribution towards 1 and we'd expect this to be reflected somewhat in the prior predictive distribution. So if I run this now, you see that we've got this sort of skewed towards 1, this sort of prior distribution, and we see that our prior predictive distribution is also skewed towards 10 individuals being the most likely number of individuals to have the disease. If we then change b such that b is also quite a high number, so we've both got a and b here now being 8, remember now that the prior distribution in this example ends up being peaked towards the value of 0.5, so we would expect our prior predictive distribution in this example also be peaked around the sort of middle range here, which is 5. So if we rerun that, 
we find exactly that. We see that the PMF here is peaked at a value of 5, which corresponds exactly with the prior distribution. So we see in this example that the prior distribution here influences very strongly what our prior predictive distribution should look like, and that makes a lot of sense because it's just the distribution of data which we would expect to obtain given our prior beliefs. Now I want to go through and actually prove mathematically that the prior predicted distribution has a certain probability distribution, which is known as the beta binomial distribution. If you don't want to watch the entirety of this maths, then obviously you can turn off now, but I wanted to include this for completeness. Okay, so we can start off by rewriting our integral with actually the binomial function here, the binomial distribution. So we know that we can write the binomial distribution as nx times theta to the power x times 1 minus theta to the power n minus x. And we can actually rewrite our beta distribution as gamma of a plus b divided through by the gamma function of a times the gamma function of b times theta to the power a minus 1 times 1 minus theta to the power b minus 1 d theta. And furthermore, what we actually note is we note that nx here is just a shorthand for NCR, which is n factorial over x factorial times n minus x factorial. And we remember that for the gamma function, essentially the gamma function is the continuous version of the factorial function. And we know that the gamma function has the property that the gamma of i plus 1, where i is an integer, is actually equivalent to i factorial here. So we can rewrite nx as just gamma of m plus 1 divided through by gamma of x plus 1 times gamma, I sort of extend this a bit, gamma of n minus x plus 1. Which then allows us to rewrite this sort of top thing here, if I, if I do it down the bottom here. The, so I'm just continuing this on down here, if you can just see what I'm doing. This is equivalent to gamma of m plus 1 divided through by, now I've got gamma of x plus 1 times gamma of n minus x plus 1 times gamma of a times gamma of b and I've also got a gamma of a plus b on the top here and I can take all this stuff outside of the integral because none of it depends on theta and then I've got just the integral from naught to 1 of theta now to the power x plus a minus 1 times 1 minus theta to the power of n minus x plus b minus 1 d theta. And in the next video, we'll continue to derive the beta binomial distribution, and we'll talk about what the beta binomial distribution looks like when we have a uniform prior.